The prisoners who got here knew that they could not get out. Those who tried found death instead of freedom. So, what was life really like in this infamous prison? Alcatraz was originally the citadel of the fort of the same name, and there were partially fortified military barracks on it. On their basis, the main building was built in 1859. For more than half a century, a military prison was located here, where deserters, violators of discipline and more criminals got into. Already at that time, the prison was known for its harsh conditions of detention and the hard work performed by prisoners. The new building appeared in 1910. During construction, many structures of old fortifications were used, stairs, reliable granite blocks that served in the past for the installation of artillery guns, and old stones with which new concrete walls were reinforced. The view of Alcatraz remained gloomy, and in those days the island had already acquired a bad reputation. Two decades later, Alcatraz was transferred to the Federal Bureau of Prisons, and its buildings were thoroughly modernized. In those days, all kinds of mafiosi, gangsters and other criminals felt very at ease. They did not even hide the fact that they gave bribes not only to officials, but also to representatives of law enforcement agencies. The authorities desperately needed a correctional facility, the very name of which would inspire terror to criminals. After all, in ordinary places of detention, representatives of mafia groups felt comfortable, their detention was generously paid for, and they were housed in a cell as in a five-star hotel. The former military prison on the island could well become such a place, provided that conditions were created on it that corresponded to its status. Alcatraz immediately received the name Prison of Prisons and began to accept the most notorious criminals who had more than one criminal record behind them. The strictest rules and a specially developed labor system were introduced for them in prison. Criminals did not get here from the courtroom at all. Usually, those who continued their criminal activities in other prisons and tried to establish their own rules were transported to Alcatraz, but there were exceptions to this rule, and ruthless gangsters or other malicious criminals were sent to this prison immediately after sentencing. The first batch of 137 prisoners arrived here in August 1934. Among them were long-known bank robbers, murderers, and counterfeiters. Everything here literally screamed that escape from the island was impossible. Very strong steel bars were installed in all the cells, gun galleries were located above the cells, prisoners were counted up to 15 times a day, motion sensors were installed everywhere, and tear gas cylinders were placed in the dining room, which could be released by remote control. Any brawl, brawl or attempt at mass disobedience can be suppressed in just a few minutes. At the same time, Doors and bars were checked daily, and snipers were constantly on duty on the towers located above each building. At first, the prisoners were not even allowed to talk while eating. The foundations of harsh conditions were laid by the first head of Alcatraz, James A. Johnston. Despite the fact that strict rules were introduced under him, the prisoners treated him with a certain amount of respect. Under his leadership, a special daily routine was developed. Prisoners in the prison had to get up at half past six in the morning, after which they had less than half an hour to clean the cell and hygiene procedures. The duration was set personally by the director. It was he who decided when the prisoners would stop talking and when they would be able to start talking. During periods of silence, if the ocean was not noisy, you could hear the sounds of the city from the shore. For some, they were the last straw, making the stay on the Devil's Island unbearable. Some went mad, others tried to take their own lives. In 1946, a riot broke out in Alcatraz, dubbed the Battle of Alcatraz. Six people captured and killed two guards and demanded to provide them with a boat on which they could reach the shore. Three rioters were eliminated by Marines who intervened in the suppression of the riots, two were sentenced to death, and another was sentenced to a second life sentence. In addition, 17 more guards and one prisoner were wounded in the battle. There were 336 cameras in Alcatraz. The area of each is for square meters. Inside there is a bad sink and toilet. There was no seat on the toilet, and only ice water flowed from the tap. There was a block D in the prison, where the cells were larger. There were criminals who were forbidden to go out for walks. It rarely held more than 300 prisoners. Alcatraz was never overcrowded. For some, it was even a kind of boon. Thus, not only communication was minimized, but also any non-statutory relationships were excluded. No flirting and no fighting. Each convict had only four rights. This is the right to clothing, food, shelter, and medical care. 
The letter was provided by the local infirmary located next to the prison building. There was even a dentist and a psychiatrist. Conscientious work and good behavior could give the right to visit the library, listen to the radio and watch TV, play softball or baseball, chess or checkers and attend church. The prisoners had the opportunity to study in absentia at the University of California. This opportunity included almost a dozen different courses, from mathematics and literature to animal husbandry. According to one of the first guards in this high-security prison, prisoners had to be provided with good food. High-quality delicious food in a suitable amount extinguishes any discontent and attempts to nip a riot in the bud. Food in Alcatraz was served regularly at 6, 45, 11, 40 and 16, 25. The menu includes breakfast, lunch and dinner. Cereal with milk, bread, compote and coffee is usually served in the morning. Lunch included the first and second, necessarily meat, vegetables, as well as bread and tea. They can be served with pie, salad or corn cobs. In the evening, they are usually offered the same as for lunch. Sometimes fruit, jelly or cakes are served as a dessert. In Alcatraz, the showers were located in the same way as in other prisons. Only here they always serve very warm, even hot water. Of course, this was not done to please the prisoners. It's just that the water temperature in the bay has never risen above 10 degrees Celsius. People accustomed to a hot shower could not hold out in such cold water for more than 20 minutes. So this measure served as additional insurance in the case of an escape. The strategy worked. None of the fugitives could swim across the bay. All were swallowed up by the icy ocean. However, there was one case in the history of Alcatraz when it succeeded. Alcatraz even had its own jazz band formed from prisoners. The band was called the Rock Islanders. The rehearsal time was strictly from 5 to 7 o'clock in the evening. If someone tried to play earlier or later, even for a minute, the instrument was confiscated. During rehearsals, it was forbidden to sing or whistle. For this, too, there was a strict punishment. The band usually gave concerts on holidays and Sundays. Some sources attribute the creation of the Rock Islanders to El Capone. They say the Mafia bagged the hat to allow him to create a music group, and in the end he succeeded. According to Capone's letters, in prison he learned to play guitar, banjo and mandala. The prisoners worked in the laundry room, in the kitchen, cleaned garbage and did gardening. They earned from 5 to 12 cents an hour. Money was not the main thing. It was important that conscientious work could bring his release closer. For example, Working at a woodworking factory and in a laundry allowed everyone to deduct two days from their term for each month worked. This is only the first year of serving a sentence. From the second to the fourth years, four days were deducted, and in each subsequent year, as many as five. Alcatraz was a place for special prisoners. Therefore, maintaining order was a very important aspect of the daily life of the prison. The prisoners were monitored by organizing roll calls more than ten times a day. The metal detector was used not only to check residents, but also for their visitors. A funny case describes how El Capone's mother once had to strip down to her underwear. The whole point was that there was metal in her corset. The guards also believed that she had hidden a weapon there. The visit was allowed once a month. Conversations were strictly controlled, and if the administration did not like the topic, the visit was immediately stopped. As soon as Alcatraz began its work as a prison, another strange rule came into force there. The prisoners were ordered to observe absolute silence. It was impossible to make a sound except while receiving food. Conversations were allowed only in workshops or on walks around the prison yard on Saturday afternoon and Sunday morning. This rule was abolished in 1937. Correspondence was also fully controlled. It was allowed to write no more than one letter per week and it should not contain more than two pages. It was possible to write only to blood relatives. The original answers were not handed out. Usually, the prison office made copies, which were then given to prisoners for review. Block D had six special cells for the most obstinate prisoners. The worst was the punishment cell, which was also called a striptease chamber. If it was possible to spend up to 19 days in the other five, then they were placed here for 12 days. To withstand it was a huge task. It was a small room upholstered in metal. There was nothing there except a hole in the floor for natural waste. The guard was watching the drain hose. The punished man was placed in this cell without clothes and received a very meager ration. There he sat naked, all alone, in the dark and icy cold. At night they gave out a mattress, and at dawn they took it away. 
In addition to other strict conditions of detention, there was another rule that served prisoners as a real psychological torture. The guards were shooting at targets every night. Mannequins were usually placed along the work track and shot. No one in prison could fall asleep until this cannonade stopped. Then the dead were left lying in their places until morning, so that the prisoners could get an object lesson that even trying to escape from here is not worth it. Al Capone was probably the most famous prisoner of Alcatraz. At first he was held in another prison. There he had royal conditions. There was expensive furniture in the cell. The bed was made with fine linens. There was a personal TV. Here Capone was quickly made to understand that he was nobody and there was no way to call him. No privileges and indulgences. Here he was the same as everyone else. This is probably what justice looks like. Today, many scary stories are told about abandoned prisons, the corridors of which are restlessly haunted by the ghosts of former prisoners. They say about Alcatraz that ghosts have always lived here. Some guards described a ghost, which they called something. His eyes were shining, he was sobbing and moaning. When he appeared, the room was filled with an unbearable stench. The appearance of the ghost was accompanied by phantom shots. They were so real that the guards were often deceived into thinking that the prisoners had armed themselves and escaped. The story describes how one day the warden, who did not believe in ghosts, conducted a tour of the prison for inspectors. Suddenly, he heard the unmistakable sounds of a woman sobbing, which came directly from the wall. Everyone started pressing their ears to the wall to figure out where they were coming from. When the crying stopped, an icy stream of air swept through the hall. There was also a case when the guards smelled smoke in the laundry room. When they burst in there, there was such thick black smoke that they fled in fear. In just a couple of minutes, the smoke disappeared without a trace. Many similar cases have been described. Are they all true? Probably not. But that's how the story gets much brighter colors, doesn't it? In 1963, Alcatraz was closed. Today there is a museum here, which is one of the main attractions of San Francisco. About one and a half million tourists visit it every year, who can make sure that it has rightfully earned its reputation as one of the darkest and most inaccessible penitentiary institutions.